Our hearts go out to the dear people of Ukraine who are in the midst of what we pray does not become a violent transition to a new government. This is about two things. Today, it's about two things. It's about today and about yesterday. It's about gas and it's about starvation. Now, as you know, the former president has been voted out of office 380 to zero from the Ukrainian parliament. Viktor Yanukovych, as of this taping, his, un his whereabouts are unknown. He fled, he tried to get out of the country on a plane, they wouldn't let him leave. He went in a car and then he dismissed his own bodyguard because he was afraid that they might detain him. Meanwhile, former prime minister Yulia Tymoshenko has been released from prison. She was sentenced to prison in 2011 for charges of being involved in some type of embezzlement or economic scam involving Russian gas that came into Ukraine and that also passed through Ukraine. All right, so as I said, this is about two things, yesterday and today. Let's start with today. Today, Russian gas pipelines pass through the Ukraine, providing natural gas not only to the Ukrainians, but also to Czechoslovakians, to Germany, to Poland, and to Italy. The gas that comes from Russia, as far east as Siberia, fuels most of Europe. Now, nations like France and the United Kingdom and other countries throughout Western Europe have gas that reaches them through nations other than Ukraine. But for the nations that I mentioned, most or all of their gas comes directly through Ukraine. So when I say this is about today, Russia needs the money and Europeans need the gas. Russia is simply not going to abide by an anti-Russian government emerging in Ukraine. And so, will Putin militarily intervene? Will they cut off gas to Ukraine to starve them out in the dead of winter? Well, that leads me to yesterday. You may remember from some of your history books that when the communists took over Russia, the Ukrainians thought, hey, this is our chance to be free because they had been dominated for a couple hundred years by czarist Russia, by the czars. And Ukraine was considered the breadbasket of Europe, right? They were, the, the land was so fertile and the, the, the crops were so numerous and the farming was so prosperous that they fed literally millions of people far outside of the borders of Ukraine. Well, Russian communists determined to keep control of Ukraine began to starve out its inhabitants in the 1920s. And when some Ukrainian communists asked the, the communists in Russia, hey, lighten up just a little bit, about, I don't know, multiple thousands of them were actually deported, that some were just shot, some were imprisoned. So this went on during the 1920s. Lenin started to relax things, but then Stalin came to power. When Stalin came to power, he was determined not only to break the back of any hopes of Ukrainian independence, but also to lie to the entire world. Anybody inside of Ukraine that even used the word starvation or hunger in any correspondence whatsoever could be arrested, perhaps shot on sight. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to do a quick history lesson of what the Ukrainian people endured yesterday and hopefully give you an understanding as to why they, some of them at least, are so filled with hatred toward their Russian masters, former masters, because they had a resistance. 
This is the voice of resistance. At least here for America.